everyone. Welcome to our second part of the discussion of budgeting uh, and hopefully add uh, a demonstration of how we might do that in Excel. So uh, once we have the uh, production budget, we've figured out the bu budget for purchases of direct materials, the direct labor budget, uh, manufacturing overhead budget. Then we move on to probably the easiest one of the whole process and that's the selling administrative budget and that's because most of them selling administrative costs are going to be fixed and they're going to be the same every month but there may there may be some that vary with volume maybe we pay commissions maybe we have other things that are going to um, not go up and down with our volume and so we'll have to base that and see that on our sales volume typically when we have this selling administrative budget, we probably need to identify those things that are going to be paid in cash and take out maybe a depreciation of why it's a cost that we would show up on our income statement. It's not what we have to pay in cash. And so to make our life easier later on when we're doing our cash flow, we may want to separate those that are paid in cash and those that are not like depreciation. So now that we've got the, all these pieces, now we start putting them together in, in a format that we're familiar with from uh, past accounting classes, and that is our income statement. So we're going to build a, a, the budgeted income statement. We use sales and dollars from the sales budget. So notice we're look, using things from our other processes. We don't just, uh, we really don't do that much additional estimating. Uh, just utilize what we are planned from the other uh, steps. So we're doing everything in dollars now, unlike when we were doing things in units on our production, but we're now looking at dollars from the sales budget. So that was a couple, that was our first step that we took the number of units and multiplied by the price per unit to get our sales budget a dollar amount. That would be what we'd start with on our budgeted income statement. Then our cost of goods sold. So that's gonna be the number of units sold from our sales budget times, and then notices in parentheses, the direct materials cost per unit. So that's from our direct materials uh, purchases budget our direct labor per unit. So when we were doing our direct labor budget, we have how many hours we're going to spend. And then we know what the cost per hour it is. We just multiply those together and that's our direct labor uh, cost. Uh, and then we divide that by the number of units we're gonna make and we have a direct labor per unit, overhead per unit. So each of those is a per unit. And the easiest way to calculate those is while we're building those three budgets. So direct materials budget, direct labor budget, and the overhead budget. And just do it at kind of a, as a, at the end, calculate how much our cost is per unit. So the expenses come from the sale administrative budget, that easy one we just finished, okay? Um, and then you might have some things that come into play from your capital expenditures budget, which is what we did in, back in chapter five. Um, so uh, net, and often that's just entirely separate and may not impact this budget income statement. Once we have the income statement, we have our operating income projected at least, pro forma, and sometimes the term you'll see, uh, which means uh, looking towards the future. Uh, cash budget, we do the cash budget or the cash flow budget, however you want to describe it. So we're going to take the cash budget and start with cash from customers. And that's going to be based on the sales budget and our collection from customers. So what we happens is we, we sell based on the sales budget and then we don't always see all of that in cash the same month or same time period that we use it. So for instance, you might sell $100 worth of stuff 
in June, but you may only collect $60 of that 100 in June and the other 40 in July. So some of your current sales may be collected in future months. We're going to do an estimate. We're going to use a percentage uh, based on our history, based on uh, what our sales terms are. We sell everybody to all our customers on credit with terms 210 net 30, then we kind of expect to receive most of the cash within 30 days. So that would be partially in the current month and partially in the next month. If we do it on 60 days, and that's what we expect them to pay, then we really shouldn't plan on the cash until uh, maybe some of it, even until the second month after the sale. Cash payments for materials is exactly the same concept, except now it's money going out for materials based on purchases from our direct materials budget. Make sure you're using your dollars amount, not the number of uh, yards of material or whatever, but on the dollar amount. So we are, again, buying it in one month and sometimes paying for part of it at least, or some of it, or maybe even all of it, the next month. So you buy a certain amount in June and you may pay for it in July or pay for part of it in June and part of it in July. You might pay part of it in June, part of it in July, and part in August. Okay. And again, based on how quickly we pay our bills and how, how what terms we have with our suppliers. We generally treat labor, overhead, and selling administrative as paid in the same period as a cost as long as it's a cash. So even though there is a technically a delay between the time when your employees work and when you pay them, we're going to generally uh, treat that as if it happens in the same accounting period because there it's usually only a cup, you know, a week or two lag between that. And same with overhead. Don't forget when you're working on a cash budget for a whole year that there are certain cash costs like taxes, dividends equipment purchases, that sort of thing that happen one time. Insurance, this gets paid once a year sometimes. And then we, in accounting, we, we amortize or use up that insurance over the year. But from a cash standpoint, we gotta make sure we have the cash on hand to pay that insurance, pay that prepaid rent, pay that uh, dividends, that sort of thing. The whole point of the cash budget is to identify when we might run short of cash because of all of the resources that we need to make our plan come together, cash is perhaps one of the most important and in some cases the easiest to deal with in that if we know we can borrow money and there's generally a bank that's willing if we're in a situation of being able to pay interest on it, who's willing to make that loan and help us out if we have a plan and especially how we're going to pay it back if we don't have a plan chances are it's going to be very difficult to get cash when we are short if we didn't anticipate it ahead of time and finally we would make pull together a balance sheet to check and make sure everything works we pull amounts from all the other budgets to make sure things balance. No new calculations. Cash from the cash budget, counts receivable from the collection from cash. That's the part that hasn't been collected yet. So if you collect 60% of your sales uh, in June, then the other 40% is in accounts receivable still at the end of June. That's how you figure out receivables. Inventory. That's what you're doing. That's your desired ending inventory on your both your production budget and your direct materials purchases budget. Accounts payable is what you have bought but have not yet paid for on your purchases budget. You might have a loan and have the payments on. It's going down as you make payments. The payment would go. The cash paid for the loan would go on your uh, cash budget and then the on the balance sheet you would show the balance of that loan going down each month or each quarter or whatever time period.
Budget income statement will tell us the net income for retained earnings, just like if we were doing this in regular accounting class. Okay. This isn't usually, again, it's a way to check, make sure we didn't leave something off, but it, we don't spend a lot of time analyzing it or using it as a comparison against what we're plan is because these kinds of items are a lot harder to kind of wrap your hand head around than say revenues and expenses as far as a as the plan so if we look at this spreadsheet this is going to give you a decent idea of how you might set this up this whole process in a excel spreadsheet and obviously the more things and more time periods the more um, detail you want the more complex your is this I put in a single spreadsheet when you're new to this I think it's a little easier to see if it is but you have to do a lot of scrolling up and down once you get more comfortable with it you can put it on different sheets and so you might do the sales and production budget on one sheet and then an, one tab and then do the next the direct materials purchase on the next tab so forth there's no magical way and of course each company might be different in how they set this up so remember we talked about the sales budget being the number of units i've done it by month here multiplied by the sales price we get our sales dollars which we'll use later all right production budget we want to have on hand 20 percent of the next month so at the end of january we want to have 20 percent of february so we actually use a formula that refers to our February forecast. This is how much we sold from, or are gonna sell in January. This is how much we wanna have for February. So we need a total of 7,500, but we already have 1,200 because we already had 20%. Now in the homework, you may be told what your beginning amount is. You may not have to calculate it. Uh, but in the case, in this situation, you, if it's always 20%, then you would expect it that January, beginning of January, you'd have 20% of January's sales if, if everything went well. So what you need to produce in January 6,300, which is the amount needed minus what you already have. And that is the same with each time. Okay, and you see that the ending inventory for January becomes the beginning inventory for February. February to March, March to April, so forth. And you usually have to project out past whatever time period you're looking at because you need to know what you have need on hand. You need in April to know how much you need at the end of uh, March. So even if you were only doing January, February, March, you still may have to uh, look at April. Once you have your production budget, this is how much you produce. That's what you're going to use for your direct materials purchases. See, we take down the production units. It takes us five gallons, five yards, five uh, pints, whatever it is of materials. So we need total 31,500 of materials needed. We need ending, right? That's, in this case, 40% of the next is what we decided. So again, we're going to take 40%. You can see the formula of the next month's need, right? So we need 31,500 for this month. We need any inventory of 15 for next month. So total 46, and we started the month with this much. Now this is all in yards or quarts or gallons or whatever you measure your units. So I'd have 12,600 on hand. I need 46, so I need to buy 34,140 yards units whatever it is each of those we project we budget three dollars and fifty cents and so our total cost of materials to be purchased is 119 490 for this month and then we do the same thing notice again that your ending inventory for one month becomes beginning inventory for the next while we're here we take our cost okay you see the formula f18 okay in this case 
it takes five units of material for each one and each of them each of those units costs three dollars and fifty cents so to make one product we need seventeen dollars and fifty cents of direct materials all right um, so that's the way that you get the per unit cost that we will use later when we do cost of goods sold direct labor budget even simpler units produced number of hours per unit dollar fifty direct labor hours needed and then the cost per hour that you're paying your employees so you're going to need 132 300 160 170 no leftovers none of that other stuff they need to calculate and because each product requires an hour and a half and costs fourteen dollars that's twenty one dollars of direct labor per unit manufacturing overhead again those that are variable are based on the number of units produced so we determined that it's four dollars and twenty five cents we plan for each unit produced so we utilize that okay fixed overhead total overhead we have no depreciation in our fixed overhead in this scenario so we tip simply add up the 90,000 88 82 the total overhead for the three months and divide it by the total units produced to get $11.87. That's our overhead cost per unit. It has to be more involved because we have fixed and variable pieces. Both the uh, direct labor and direct materials are only variable, so you can kind of use the shortcut per unit uh, calculation. Selling administrative budget, we said was the easiest one because most of everything is fixed, and this that's how we treated it. We took out the depreciation because it's non-cash, so we have the cash amount and the total. On the income statement, where does the sales come from? From our sales budget. Cost of goods sold, okay? Number of units sold from our sales budget times, and we utilize our cost per unit. We have $17.50, $21.11.87. The total of those three times the number of units. That is our cost of goods sold. Subtract it, get our gross margin. Selling administrative from our selling administrative budget and equals our operating income. Very simple, straightforward income statement. You could also have done this with a contribution margin format, right? And use the variable cost, then contribution margin, then fixed costs. That's very common as well in our budget income statement. We had no capital expenditure budget because we really focused on that in chapter five. Okay. And about the cash budget. So in this case, we assume we're going to collect 50% in the current month and 50% in the next month. So we're going to collect, and I would have to tell you what you're going to collect from the month before, like December, some of the December sales we're going to collect in January. And that's what we'd have to tell you. And then we're going to collect half of the current month's sales. So half of your sales in dollars from your sales budget. So the other half is going to be collected in February, right? That's half of January and then half of February. And then this is half of February plus half of March. That's our pattern. Okay. Same thing with cash payments for purchases. We're going to have to figure out how much we're going to pay for our direct materials purchases. I will have to tell you what it was from the prior, but we're going to pay 60% of what we bought in January. The other 40% is going to be of January's purchases are going to be paid for in February along with 60% of February and 40% of February and 60% of March. Then the direct labor is in the same month that we incurred it. Manufacturing overhead directly from 
what we talked about earlier, right? Which is, okay, there was no depreciation to take out there, so we didn't have to worry about it. But selling administrator, we did. We used the cash, because this is the cash budget, the cash amount, not the uh, total. So there's your total cash payment. So we have 585,000 coming in from customers. We're paying out 513,000. We started with $50,000 in cash. And so at the end of the month, we're gonna have 121 because we got more cash coming in than going out. And of course you could have other things like capital expenditures, payments on loans, once a year items to remind you there. And then you can put together the budget, the pro forma balance sheet or budget balance sheet. Okay, the cash is going to come from the cash flows projections. Accounts receivables. This is the part that, that in March's sales that you are not haven't collected yet. Raw materials, your desired ending inventory of direct materials. Make sure that you use the units times the cost per unit. Finish goods, okay? How many units do you have in inventory, desired ending inventory and units on the production budget at the end of March? Desired ending inventory at the end of March times cost per unit that we use just like we did with cost of goods sold. And then accounts payable, okay? The rest of them aren't gonna change much. Plant and equipment is not gonna change. You could have a loan it's going to change with payments. Common stock is going to be the same most of the time. And retained earnings is going to change only with net income or dividends. 